How many, uh, what's, is there like a max cap on how many people can join an event right now? Two million. Okay. <laughs> we can scale even more than that. My request. Welcome to another episode of Social Leverage Conversations. For today's episode, we decided to switch things up a little bit. So instead of using Zoom, we're using this new platform called Introbook. Because you know what? I like to have conversations and interactions that are engaging and thought-provoking. And I also want you listeners to have conversations that are engaging and thought-provoking. Well, as I was thinking about it, I thought, who better to have this first conversation with than the person behind this incredible idea? So ladies and gents, let's welcome the founder and CEO of Introvoke, Juana Manolaki. Welcome to the show, Juana. Thank you for inviting me, Nikita. Nice to be here. Likewise, yeah. So I kind of mentioned it in the intro a little bit that we're using a new platform instead of Zoom. But why don't you tell us, like, what is Introvoke? Yes, it actually can't be any more different than Zoom, <laughs> which is good. What Introvoke does is the only company that provides organizations with the ability to meet their audience right where they are on their own website. They can take different pre-built modules, such as this virtual stage that we're in right here, chat, virtual networking hubs, hybrid stages, and fully embed them within their own branded universe or using any other website builder in a matter of seconds, either as an iframe or, of course, we give them APIs for more sophisticated, you know, integrations. It's completely different from Zoom because Zoom has is very good at video conferencing, of course. Like everyone knows, you just launch the app and it's video conferencing. But what businesses realized is that it's good for video conferencing only. When it comes to actually building events and building programs that are throughout the year and building a community, getting your employees engaged, it has a lot of limitations. And that's why you've seen so many third-party platforms like events like Hopin and so many others that were were coming around in 2020 because video conferencing tools were not good enough. Now we're at kind of the next level where people realize that virtual communication is important and it's so important that they want to make it an integral part of their business and they can only do this by actually integrating it. Right. But okay, so I was thinking, I was going to ask you this actually, that was your idea, like, is it a COVID baby? But you're telling me that this happened before that. Yeah, a lot of people are like, how did you know? Were you like a bit of a Nostradamus or something? It's like, well, I think that, you know, the world was always going to go towards this direction. When the pandemic hit, basically accelerated where the world was already going towards. It accelerated by many years, don't get me wrong, but still it, we did feel this need way before 2020. And um, funnily enough, in 2019, when we did kind of soft launch the company, we actually released our hybrid solutions. And a lot of companies right now in the space, they are virtual, they were born in 2020, and now they're thinking, how are we going to do hybrid? For us, it was completely the other way around. And I think, I mean, you guys came out of the Techstars New York Accelerator program, and you were in the class of 2020? Yeah, we actually did the Comcast NBC Universal Lift Labs Accelerator powered by Techstars. It's out of Philly, but of course it was virtual. And uh, we graduated in December 2020. Yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations. And uh, I think I recently attended, I think it was just last week that I attended an event, the Techstars event, and it was also hosted on mm -hmm. your Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah, they had thousands of people at some point kind of joining and they, they customized it fully. They made it all kind of Barclays blue. It was it was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you know what? And, and I was remarking this to you before we kind of started recording, but I still can't get over the fact like, you know, how clean this feels. And, you know, I, I'm just like, because you're on Zoom all day and there's this like fatigue that kicks in because it's a very rudimentary like, you know, platform where it just enables this like video conferencing. But this one, like, I mean, I don't know, it feels so cleaner and I feel like I'm feeling so energized. Like everything looks cleaner and prettier and I'm just like really enjoying this conversation so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it's. Thank you so much for that. It's uh, we've put a lot of effort and, and thinking into the design. We just did a huge revamp, of course. You know, kind of um, as something that we did the investment and wanted to make it very intuitive and very user friendly. Because yes, we are working with businesses, but those businesses have 
audience of consumers and it's important that every single touch point is at the high quality and that's why we also built everything in house because we wanted to make sure that from scalability reliability all the way to every single button is engineered properly right yeah so how big is the team now well right now well we, we closed four weeks ago and we've tripled the size of the team which are, we're very excited right now the team is getting up to about eight. The engineering team, we've been added quite a bit. Initially, it was myself, uh, the CTO, Andre Ermilov. He comes out of um, Microsoft and Intel. So he's the brain behind all of this technology. He's been building video streaming toolkits for a very long time. So we brought some more on the engineering team. And then on the business side of things, we start uh, growing a lot in customer experience. And we'll start adding sales as we get more and more customers on board. That's awesome. Well, you said you closed a couple couple weeks ago. So uh, let's tell our listeners and let's congratulate you that uh, you guys closed mm-hmm. a secret round, which was led by Struck Capital. And uh, we at Social Leverage, we're very happy to have been able to participate in the round. And uh, with that, you guys also happen to join our Fund3 family. So congratulations on the fundraise. And uh, I guess you mentioned that uh, one of the key things is uh, increasing the staff. And what are some of the other things that you're going to do with this new round of capital? Yeah, it's been, first of all, thank you. And um, thank you to the whole social leverage team for believing in us and being part of the round. We're, we're so incredibly happy with every single investor we have on board. Of course, Truck Capital led our round and they saw the vision from day one and Social Leverage joined very shortly thereafter. So it's great to have such a high caliber of investors that I'm sure will take us to to the next level in new heights as we grow the company. We'll be using, the proceeds will be used, of course, increasing the staff. So to make sure that we can accelerate our company and mostly in the technology bit. So of course, we're lucky somehow to to raise a seed round with a technology already in production. A lot of customers were using our technology even before the seed round. But of course, now it gets to a point where we're starting working with enterprises. So the quality of video scalability become very important, security as well. And we'll be investing into making our technology a lot more robust, reimagining how hybrid looks like and really building up the whole suite of technologies that will be hybrid for the new, you know, the new normal. And it's really kind of taking our company and accelerating it with our customers. One thing that we notice with our customers is that they really appreciate the support that we give them as a team. And I want to make sure that we'll keep ourselves to those standards. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't know for some reason why, but the example that's coming to my mind is TED Talks. And you're right that like, I think back in the day, it was always a live event and you would get the recording at a later time. Mm. It was almost like, you know, you were penalized that, oh, because I'm not as part of live audience. So, you know, you kind of like at a later date, you get to kind of watch the event. But I think with what you guys are doing, I'm almost, it almost feels like that virtual or live, like, you know, you get to be an active participant, an active audience. And I think that is like, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like, yeah, it's, you're right. And um, I've been in the events industry all my life. Like since I started my career with HP, always been either a speaker or an organizer or a participant. So I've just been on all kinds of parts of the table. And um, one thing that really frustrated me was like the lack of engagement. I would either go to an event in person or I would just watch a recording on YouTube. Like how, like it was just not okay with all the technology that's around. I was like, must be a better way. So our technology, of course, video, everything, is, is crystal clear, but it's all about how you're engaging the audience. On the on the stage, you have the presenters being safe as well, so no one can hijack this conversation. But then straight from here, seamlessly, you go into the networking stage where you have the speakers going into different circles and attendees going to ask questions and really replicating that movement at the cocktail party, even giving you know the participants the ability to have like a side conversation, go into a one-to-one circle with someone and right. continue that conversation there. It's It's more, we realized with our customers that it became more about the engagement and less about the content. We have customers that started with like doing two hours of sessions and maybe 10 minutes of networking. And now things have shifted. They're doing probably like 10, 15 minutes of discussions and then everyone goes into networking and they stay there for like three, four hours. So it's interesting to see how the trends have changed. Right. Yeah. And and I think so. How many uh, what's is there like a max cap on how many people can join an event right now? Two million. 
Okay. <laughs> we can scale even more than that by request, but um, as far as I know, we're the most scalable solution there is on the market right now. Also, because we build this in house, our you know our margins are very healthy, and we don't sit on top of APIs to be worried about like are they gonna crash or not. Mm-hmm. So we safely can scale to two million and had events so for thousands of people. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Like you've already. You know what? The minute you said that, like, oh, you've been in that space your entire career, like, I could see that it was like a way for like you to scratch your own itch. Yeah. I think you really understand the space, and especially because you know there's so much effort that goes into like planning and organizing these events. And I think everybody comes out frustrated, especially the organizers, because they're mm-hmm. like, where was that engagement? I think one thing that COVID has done, and which probably is in your favor, and which probably won't go away after even after the world normalizes, is that sure people can go back to traveling again but there's still this like demand for like international participation and audience and yeah. I think that globalization like I think that demand is here to stay oh for sure and you know I think that after like especially if like this new normal it's not going to be necessarily people wanting to work from home they're going to be wanting to work from anywhere yeah. And it's going to be very difficult for business leaders, managers to really justify asking your employees, your customers to fly across the globe just to meet you for half an hour when we've been doing it successfully virtually for two years. And I actually was talking to one of the companies in kind of our uh, in our pipeline and they said, you know, one, we're 70 percent towards our target, and we only spend 10 percent of our budget. So we're never going to go back to normal. And that's why I think, you know, hybrid opened up a lot of opportunities. And as an event organizer at HP, I remember I was putting up so many amazing events and 70% of the people that I was inviting, they just could not come. They had a family commitment. It was raining on a Thursday. It was, you know, things that could have easily been solved with technology. And the way we position ourselves is not just in the event space. Like for us is like, how will businesses communicate with yeah. all their stakeholders across yeah. the board? And that's why we kind of want to be the Intel inside of every organization kind of digital space. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I think it would have been naive of us to think that, you know, the world went from like live only to then 100% Zoom only to then when things return to normal to kind of go back to live only. Like, I think, you know, it's between those two extremes. Like, I think the new normal would have been somewhere in the middle, which you say hybrid. Yeah. And I think whoever's like focused on kind of like acing that new normal is probably being more smart, which I mean, you guys are. But just out of curiosity, so like, isn't this something that would have been on like Zoom's agenda or like Zoom's radar? Or or you think that they play in a completely different space? They take a different space, I would say. I mean, we overlap in certain areas. You would think like a webinar-ish here and there. But for them to enter this space, they would have to shift a lot of things from a business perspective, like their offerings. Then from a technology, the way they build the technology, that will have to be a shift as well. It's a completely different business, basically. Right. So yes, obviously there's players, there's players in the market, which mm-hmm. only validates the growth and the opportunity of this market. But for now, at least for the foreseeable future, we're the only ones that can occupy this space between third-party platforms and APIs like Twilio and so on. We even noticed uh, something that we actually never, never thought until recently. There's companies that want to build third-party platforms, virtual platforms that are starting to use us as an embeddable component for that. Uh, we already have a few customers doing that. It's interesting to see how customers are choosing to to use us. And it will come to a point that even if you want to use a third party platform, most likely will be powered by us. Right. And I think that's probably one of the biggest difference or one of the biggest features that differentiates you from Zoom, because Zoom is kind of like still an outsider, right? Like I can use it if I don't want to use it. I stop you know, paying for that premium plan and off I go. But your platform is so embeddable that I think it brings with it this inherent like loyalty, right? Like if I've gone through the effort of kind mm-hmm. of embedding it into my platform, you know, things have to go really wrong before I'm like, yeah, no, I don't want this. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's even more than that. I mean, like when we talk about the, the the features and and the way we set up the technology is there's a lot of other uh, like reasons why people choose to use our our technology. Like you can host a production quality production, you know, high production quality event in just a, a few buttons, and anyone can like at oh, any. I, I am just loving this. Like I'm. <laughs> I have not seen this clear video. <laughs> you know what? Maybe like one on one with FaceTime from time to time. Oh, yeah. Of course. That's about it. But like, this is amazing. <laughs> We are doing HD, so for us, HD is standard, and we go all the way to 4K if you have, like, entertainment and stuff. But, you know, when you're doing kind of an all-hands or a product launch, you want to make sure that things are going well and that, it, you know, you get the, the best quality that there is. Right, yeah. It almost seems like that, you know, you started off with an enterprise quality kind of, like, in mind. But available for everyone. Right, right, yeah. So the standard is, like, you know, way higher. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to like retail only, and then we'll scale and grow as we grow larger. Yeah, I have a very detail oriented CTO <laughs> who's uh, interviewing all our engineering team multiple times, making sure that every single thing that we do is super high quality. So it's all down to him. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, you know, as a fellow OCD, like I am just like, <laughs> I'm just loving this. <laughs> Like, I am already having a very introvoking conversation here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the minute I read it, like, uh, and I think it was when uh, I was reading that article, I think about one of the articles about the fundraisers, and I was like, that makes total sense. Like, interactions that are so provoking and, and you know, engaging. Yeah, it was uh, Anthony, actually, from, from TechCrunch. He's the one who asked, where is the name coming from? And we noticed that we actually never explained it. And, and when we did, it seems that right now, I think it's, it's going to be part of our, our messaging going forward. Yeah, for sure. But I'm kind of like, I'm kind of uh, bummed that I can't use that. Oh, these guys were COVID baby. Uh, because you, guys, <laughs> you guys beat COVID to it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, I think uh, one final question. So like how, now that the fundraise is over, um, how are you spending your days? Like, what does your day look like? Days and nights are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, right now, I think we straight after we raised, uh, I brought the whole team together, especially kind of the key people in the team to putting together the, the whole strategy, going to market, making sure that we're going to market in a, in a smart way, that we're building and prioritizing the right technologies. And um, everything that we built, we built with our customer feedback from day one. We built an MVP of this introvoke in 2019 in three weeks, just because we wanted to put it in front of people and say, like, do you like it? Tell us what you like and what you don't. And we'll keep having that mentality going forward. So right now we're spending the days between product, making sure that everything's, everything's being built well and customers. Since the moment we announced our fundraise, we got in like 48 hours over 40 demos booked wow. with organizations of all sizes from small ones to enterprise us and europe so it's been it's been a great demand and we haven't even gone to market yet so right now it's uh it's all about getting customers to use mm -hmm. it we've also just got to the milestone of one million minutes used by our customers that's uh, awesome so it's Congratulations. thank you so it's great to see how how they keep on using the technology in various yeah. ways and we'll be building the company right now to in a growth stage obviously to get to our next uh, our next stage of series a that's amazing um so do you have any customers in uh, canada yet i have to ask i'm in vancouver <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. Not in Canada just yet. But if you know anyone, we're happy to talk to them. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting, I need to do some work here. <laughs> Maybe after this, um, after people see, like, I can't wait for people to actually see, like, how awesome this, like, recording turns out. And I think we might have to make, like, a permanent switch over from, like, Zoom to Introvoke. So we got to do that. We'll set yeah. you up. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for taking out the time today. And uh, I look forward to uh, using Introvoke and uh, having more Introvoking conversations with you. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you for inviting me, Nikita. I appreciate it. Thanks.